February 14th. This is sort of like our Super Bowl. Everybody was telling me it was nuts. 2011. There is risk required in marketing. This is a big idea, and it's our idea. Just go. This is history, no matter what happens. When you're going to try to reposition the industry, you got to go bold. Prime time. You are about to witness an historic competition. Who is Watson? They go a long way away. It's just like, I feel like I was meeting with Putin again back in the Kremlin. I'm Sam Palmazano, former CEO of IBM. You had to set the tone at the top with what you expected from the team, and then you'd give them these grand challenges. A grand challenge at IBM was a very difficult problem that has not been solved that technology could solve. It also has the characteristic of being self-evident and it signals to people something about the world has changed forever. Deep Blue was a famous grand challenge. Deep Blue was looking at the capability to apply predictive technologies to the next move in the game of chess. To beat the best at chess was something that had never been done before. Nobody knew how to do it. So that qualified as a grand challenge. Larry has a very flashy, attacking, dangerous style. 1997, Deep Blue played Kasparov, New York City. Deep Blue had every strategy of chess loaded into the machine. And for the final round, I was actually on my way to New York City, and I got to the venue. There was just this uproar. People were just buzzed. And I walk into the ballroom, I guess. I'm like, what happened? What happened? Kasparov has resigned. Deep Blue won. It was a massive amount of coverage of the fact that this computer could beat the grandmaster at his game called chess. That captured the attention of the world. But Charles Krauthammer, a Pulitzer Prize winning columnist, wrote a piece that ran in all places. The headline of it was, Be Afraid. Do you want your brand to be associated with any of those words? I don't think so. <laughs> Deep Blue was so successful in capturing the imagination of the public and bring a lot of luster to IBM. But there was always this eye out for, what's our next one? Not many companies make it to 100. No technology company comes close. We never defined ourselves as a product company. We don't want to be known as the Xerox copier machine. It's very much a long game view of how do you build a company that's gonna last for centuries. In the DNA of great brands are things that shouldn't go together because that's what makes them stand apart. Representing gangsters everywhere, please welcome Snoop Dizzle. At IBM, part of that combination of things is innovation. Typing will never be the same again. That is trustworthy in every dimension of trustworthiness. So how do you get it right? where well, you are the innovator, but in a way that earns trust. There's a lot of risk in technology shifts, and sometimes you get it right, and sometimes you get it wrong. Hi, I'm Dave. Should I say hi? Or... No. Dave Ferrucci, I was the lead researcher in charge of the Watson Project. Dave is a genius. I mean, he probably would never say that, and if you meet him, he'll claim he's not that smart. Posture changes everything. But Dave sees the future. Because then I could do my godfather impression. <laughs> I asked these guys, please show me things that are going to have the biggest impact on society and the biggest impact on IBM in the next 10 years. Open domain question answering was an unsolved problem. It wasn't broadly understood in the public about how computers struggle with, with language's ambiguity and its place in the unstructured information management architecture, which was a framework for building. There's still about a 27% yeah, in chance. AI and semantic networks. Oh, like 35, 37% right. to the nth degree with large language models. Get to 80, 90%. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. I need a game. <gasps> <gasps> because people know what a game is. We need something people can understand. Man, that looks easy. They're the ones that came back with, hey, we could play this thing called Jeopardy, massive Q&A. It'll set the tone for the future of artificial intelligence. They jumped up out of my chair and said, this is it, we're going. 
Jeopardy technically certainly qualified as a grand challenge. Jeopardy questions were nuanced. There was no technology that can precisely find those answers, but it was sold internally as a great opportunity for IBM to strut its brand. IBM largely was coming at it from a brand and marketing perspective. And then John represents this really thoughtful, careful, creative marketing genius. We sat in the conference room. Dave starts talking about the next grand challenge having to do with data. Then I said, I think this is interesting. But to get the value of that data, which again is most of the data in the future, computers have to do more. I explained why and gave some examples of why I thought it was hard, but not completely impossible. Um, okay, therefore, drum roll, the grand challenge, yes, is Jeopardy. Hey, I like to compete. Why don't I get interested in that and do that? Really? <laughs> that evening game show? There was a lot of internal debate. There were many stakeholders here. Like, what does Jeopardy want from this? What does IBM want from this? What does Dave and the team want from it? How will this be received by the world? People thought it was pure folly, and some people just didn't even understand what it was. <laughs> of course, I had to ask, so is this a theory? Or, are you... no, 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 we're building it now. We're building it, we're building it. I said, well, how is the system performing? Well, it takes uh, like three minutes to give an answer, and it gets it right, uh, you know, 20% of the time. I'll see you guys in like five or eight, 10 years. <laughs> and we did it in four. And not because I'm a genius, but because I know I couldn't do it in three. And if I said more than five, you probably wouldn't have funded it. <laughs> so I was like between three and five. Other career scientists at IBM would actually pass me in the hall and start laughing at me. Like laughing at me like I was an absolute lunatic. Dave had to do his job to push the boundaries of computer science, but to the degree to which great brands are built on distinctive character, story is a natural fit because characters have an arc. So we started to think about Watson as the embodiment of IBM's character. So many people would say IBM needs to be cool. IBM needs to be funny. I'm like, why? Well, because brands are emotions. I said, well, do you think humans feel more than just like, ha ha ha, like laughter? or cheap sentiment. I think we feel lots of things, and I think IBM can trigger those emotions too. We needed that kind of a personality so it wouldn't be as threatening as people portrayed after watching this machine win on chess. You're not talking about manual labor. This was something that seemed deeply intellectual, hearing a machine talk. This conversation can serve no purpose anymore. Answer questions quickly, with confidence, seemed disturbing. When Dave Ferrucci first came to see me, and I'm beginning to grasp the importance of this and why it is a grand challenge and why it is the future, I thought of that headline, Be Afraid. I said, you and your team are going to eventually be able to beat this challenge and that is not going to simply be seen as a good thing. So whatever we do, we have to anticipate that and stay true to the character of the company. Working backwards from that, it informed a series of decisions, some of them seemingly at the time not very significant. How do you make Watson this computer voice, not like a computer machine voice, but not quite a human voice? We tested the voices. What is Kellogg's? And it ranged from like scary, spooky, disturbing to, you know, laughable. What is the next investment? But that meant that it all mattered. I remember thinking, that sounds good enough. <laughs> you wanted Watson to come across humble, uh, if not friendly, certainly not threatening. What is a digital persona? I let them do their thing. I couldn't pick a voice, I mean, right? I knew Dave Ferrucci would make sure it was genius-like, but my, the team and I had to work on all the other aspects of this character that was gonna walk, well, didn't walk, but be on stage. 
IBM's computer Watson puts all its microchips on the line in the Jeopardy! IBM Challenge. They came here in this auditorium on that stage. We built the Hollywood set, literally. You are about to witness an exhibition match pitting an IBM computer system against the two most successful players in Jeopardy! history. Ken Jennings, Brad Rutter, they both were known for winning the most games and winning the most money. Like Gary Kasparov in chess, best of the humans. I remember in the hallway interacting a little bit with Sam, who was way more confident than I was that, uh, that we were gonna crush it. <laughs> it's like Rory McIlroy winning the Masters. Fingers crossed. This is Watson. Me and my team and everything we had done for the last four years were just going to be exposed, you know, on display. There was kind of an enormous tension. There was a chance we were going to lose, and there was real concern. This is early stage technology. It's not always perfect and beautiful, and it's early stage. Forget beta, we're not even at alpha at this point. But the biggest worry I had, quite honestly, was is it really going to work? Four-letter word for a vantage point or a belief. Brad, what is a view? Yes. Watson did not do well in the beginning. What is leg? No. You can feel a little bit of tension. Is it actually going to recover from this? Because it was doing rather poorly. Ken, what are the 20s? No. Watson. What is 1920s? Ken said that. Somebody was going to get a personal message. I <laughs> said, what happened? Dave had like 20 people on his team. They were in the audience. They looked like they were sweating bullets. They were not happy. One moment was when I gave a very bad answer. Its largest airport is named for a World War II hero. The question had something to do with the names of airports in the United States. Watson's answer was, what is Toronto? It was a gasp. Aren't you smart enough to realize that Toronto is not in the United States? Watson had many doubts. They're like, come on, come on, come on. Watson. You could see him like not getting it right, not getting it right. What is leprosy? And then, you are right. Zoom. <laughs> Watson retains control of the board. I went over to the head of IBM Research at the time, and I said, we need to slow this thing down, because by the third game, it was going to be a blowout. Because Sam, there's no stopping it. <laughs> it's going to do what it's going to do. <laughs> Watson, like, figured it out. And when it got the last double jeopardy, I think it was Ken that took the clicker and just threw it on the floor. This was IBM's brand. Work hard, innovate and lead. Here is the final Jeopardy category. At the risk of failure, but that's the whole thing. If there was no risk, that's not the brand. That was powerful. And we find who is Bram Stoker at, hello, 17,973, 41,413. During the entire project, you're visualizing winning. You're working every minute for success. You're not going in saying, oh, this might not work. My team stood up and the whole IBM community, senior execs all stood up and gave me a standing ovation. This was before we played the game. So it was like, hey, we might still lose this, but, you know, it was already great. That's kind of what you want, right? You, you wanted that appreciation for the effort. And it was important for my team to see that because they knew they had already won. The reaction started immediately. And then when you got to the press, it was completely off the charts. Last night, Jeopardy! and IBM made history by pitting a computer against two game show champs. The volume of positive articles about Watson and Jeopardy! You could not have spent enough money to get that level of PR and brand enrichment. I went from skeptical about the power of marketing to a complete convert. Please welcome Watson! It became this pop culture moment. I mean, where's, where's the emotion? Where's the real thing, the passion? Where's the passion? I saved the passion for your wife, Andy. <laughs> There's a lot of risk when you're pushing the envelope. Somebody has to create that vision. Capturing the ethos and putting it into the culture I mean, I, I always thought 80% of my job was about culture. You know, we spent a lot of time and a lot of IBM's money, of course, 
you know, with our campaigns and messaging and platforms. But it started with the culture. We prepared an ad that we would run all over. And the title of the ad was Humans Win. Humans Win means Dave Ferrucci and his team won. That ad is not about a team of researchers. It's about humanity. They were rooting for a moment of progress. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. If we went through the physics and the mathematics of massive Q&A like in Jeopardy, nobody would know what we were talking about. You need a narrative, you need a story about the role AI plays in society. I had to take them on a journey like I went on myself. Stories take you somewhere because people encounter change in their life. There is an emotional connection as well as a cognitive connection. The machine has understood my voice and caused the adding machine to correctly perform these arithmetical operations. What I learned from Watson in particular was about people. They really got caught up in the story of this character coming to life. There was something very powerful about that. I, for one, welcome our new computer of the world. <laughs> but Ken tapped into something that reminded me of Be Afraid, and here we are in 2025. It's part of the conversation about AI. Watson illuminated an understanding of what we now know. Watson foreshadowed and opened the pathway up out of the so-called AI winter and into this. For decades, technologists have teased us with this dream that you're going to be able to talk to technology and it'll do things for us. Hey Siri, read me my unread emails. Can you help me calm my nerves a little bit? Oh, you're doing a live demo right now? That's awesome. IBM and other technology companies create tools and it really comes down to how people and institutions use the tools. Witness the ultimate computition. We have to resist fear. I think we get afraid of momentary fears and local fears and, you know, is it going to take my job away? Is it going to do this? You have to look at machine intelligence as a tool that's going to enable your creativity, that's going to give you more choices to become what you want to be. I don't see machines as ultimately taking away. I see machines as helping us reach for more. So friends, what's next?